All right, this is the first video in the Garmin Montana immersion series of classes. With the Montana, it's a much more complicated unit than the Zumo series, so on this one it will be three parts in the immersion class as well as a separate video for how to display tracks as part of that series of videos. And in these videos, we're going to cover all the different things in setup as well as all your menus uh, that pertain to adventure riding or motorcycle use in general. This unit is very flexible, so there are some features that we're just going to gloss over where they're more of a hiking feature or a hunting feature, something like that. But we'll really dive in and get you the information to set up this unit so it'll work best for you for motorcycle use. This is definitely the shop favorite at Touratech USA. This is what all of us are using, and a lot of it is because it's so customizable and such a powerful unit. So before we go too far, i like to start with who I am, a little bit of back history on me. So my name is Eric Archambault. I am the showroom manager here at Touratech USA. I'm also the Touratech Rally East Ride Coordinator. So I get to spend a lot of time every year using the GPS as well as teaching these classes and have really spent a lot of time using it. I've been running the Garmin Montana since 2012 when it was released. It is still my favorite unit Garmin makes, so it's... A great unit. I've also have a background in doing, you know, the older roadbook style navigation. I've done some timekeeping enduros. I've done uh, some roadbook rallies where you're measuring distance and navigating with a big piece of paper or a roll of paper. Uh, so I am familiar with that. It is a different challenge. It's still fun, but not as easy as using a GPS. I've also ridden a lot of the backcountry discovery routes and used to lead rides at the Touratech rally. So using it as we're going to discuss here and optimizing it for that a lot of experience and I, I do have a lot of experience using maps in the, in the Marine Corps I did the whole land I have thing walk around the woods with a map and a compass counting my steps so I'm really comfortable with the maps and if you have a solid map background that does help when you come to the GPS because ultimately the GPS is just going to be an electronic map that happens to show you where you are in real time and I normally like to put a little thing in any of the GPS classes. The GPS isn't a silver bullet that's going to get you, so you'll never get lost. You'll know where you are, you just might not know where that is in relation to anything else. So when I'm setting up one of the rallies, I'll have GPS tracks, and they'll be pulled up my computer, and I'll probably have three or four different maps from different sources all laid out on my desk and use all that information. I still carry a write in the rain waterproof notebook for taking notes if I am setting up an event where a lot of times that's just the quickest way to go from mile 5 to mile 10 on this track it was really sandy and make make those notes so you can still use maps and notebooks they, they are still very useful when you are navigating with the GPS and I still use all of them so it's just a matter of getting more tools in your you know in your toolbox so you can be better at navigating the backcountry and more successful and hopefully not get lost or get lost to the, the degree that you need to get outside help to, to get it home safely. So that's the, the end about me and my little blip about maps are still important. Now on to the Garmin Montana itself and a little bit of history on the unit it has been around, as I mentioned, since 2012, and that was when the original Montana 600 and 650 were released. The 600 was the base model, the 650 had a camera built in, and generally the 650 models also had a T designator at the end of them, so anything that you see from Garmin that has a T comes with topo maps. In the case of the United States, it's going to be 100K topo pre-installed on the unit. And I do recommend if you're doing backcountry stuff, 100k topo, if you don't have a unit with it, it's a great add-on. And then in 2016, they did update the units, and that's when you saw the Montana 610 and the 680 come out, and they added more internal memory, they did change a couple of menus, and then it had the ability to export as a fitness thing, so a lot of the stuff that a Garmin Fitness Watch could do, it did have the ability to augment that. And then they added GLONUS uh, for the satellite capability. So beyond having the U.S. satellite network, you also had access to the Russian satellite network, which having more constellations to pull from would normally get you your location quicker when you turn on the unit for the first time. And then just having more satellites available, you should have better information available to you. 
And then best use and strengths of this unit. And there, you know, Garmin has a few that are focused on the motorcycle side of things. The Montana is is a weird one. It's one of their last ones that they seems to be marketed for everything. So it does it does make a great motorcycle unit. You do have that four inch pressure type touchscreen, so it works with gloves on. Uh, depending on what maps you have in it, you can do just about everything the Zumo series can do in terms of navigation and turn by turn. Uh, it does not have Bluetooth, which to me isn't so much of a downside. Uh, there are enough customizable prompts you can have that you can still not miss turns if you are doing a, a tur you know turn by turn to an address or something like that. My favorite feature of the Montana is you do have the ability to make almost an unlimited amount of customizable profiles. And with the profiles, it allows you to set up the unit. It's still going to access the same maps and all of that, but you're changing the filter that you're looking at from. So you could set up the unit in one profile for hiking, and it's going to have the appropriate maps it's going to default to and the appropriate information. And instead of having to go in and change a dozen or two dozen features, if you're going to reuse it on a motorcycle, you can just go, I want my motorcycle profile. So that, I think, is one of the biggest advantages of this unit is you can have it set up for many different things, both on and off a bike. And that's really awesome there. And then the amount of customization, every menu can be changed, your trip computer information that you can access on various screens, it covers pretty much everything Garmin does with the GPS. So you can have the fitness stuff, the standard car stuff, as well as even, they, they even dive into the aviation stuff a little bit. So there's a lot of trip computer stuff you'll never use. I've never decided I need velocity made good, but you have something that Garmin kind of just gave you everything and you can go through and figure out what you need for that. And if you want one GPS to use on your bike and in the boat and on the car when you're hiking, you can have something that's going to do everything really well as long as you have it set up for each application appropriately. In the box, the Montana where it is sold and marketed to be able to do a lot of things. It doesn't come with a lot. It is kind of an a la carte deal where in the box, you get the unit, the battery, and the USB cable to hook it up to the computer, and that's about it. If you have a, a T version of the unit, it will come with 100K Topo pre-installed, which is nice. But generally, you're going to want to add the City Navigator map set, and we'll talk about that more when we get into maps later on. But it's not going to come with mounts and any of that stuff, so you, you are going to have to get everything you need to set it up for whatever you're using it for. And speaking of mounts, getting the mounting options, you got a couple examples here, and some of this does show the versatility a little bit. Garmin does offer an automotive mount, so if you are going to use this in the car, the bottom left-hand side of the screen, it's using the automotive suction cup mount that they sell. Uh, they also have a beanbag style that just sits on the dashboard. The nice thing with both of the automotive mounts is it has a cigarette lighter connector, so you can just plug it into the car, and there is a speaker in there, so... As long as you have City Navigator maps, which are routable, it will tell you turn left, turn right. It will give you all those typical car features. And then for kind of some other options in the both the upper left and the bottom right, using RAM mounts is attached to, uh, in this case, a Honda CR250R and a Vespa Sprint. The It's going to use RAM stuff. It's called the Garmin amps rugged mount and it does have the connector so you can connect it to 12 volt power and both of these I've removed that there's just two little torque screws if you're gonna be running a two-stroke application or something that doesn't have it I always recommend if you do have the ability to plug it into 12 volt power to do so because it's gonna allow you to run the screen at maximum brightness and then dust is less of an issue and then on the top right hand screen I do have it mounted above the gauges on my KTM 950 Adventure with a Toratec locking mount. And the locking mounts, something the Toratec does sell, so it's maybe a little bit of a shameless plug, but they are nice because they are lockable. So when you stop to get gas or you're getting food real quick on a trip, you don't worry about your many hundred dollar GPS walking away while you're not looking at it. And if you do have the option to mount above your gauges, and a lot of bikes, there's just not enough framework up there to do it safely. 
I do recommend, especially if you're riding off-road and standing up, because it's a lot easier to see when you have it mounted flat on the handlebar, like on the Honda, the top right, or top left, rather. It's great if you're just using it as a trip computer or something like that, but if you're trying to actively navigate, when you're standing up, you're on the foot pegs, you're in the attack position, you're having to look really far down, where having it kind of out in front of you on your fairing does make it easier to navigate. But these are just some examples. You are going to get need to get mounting hardware to get it on the bike. The Amps rugged mount is a great way to go. That's the way I've always done it. I know Ram does make a clip-in mount that doesn't have any ch charging options, but for most uh, dual sport bikes or adventure bikes, you're going to have 12-volt power available that you can tap into, so I do recommend that mount. Now, onto the physical overview of the unit itself. As I mentioned, it is a pressure type touch screen, so it does work with gloves. You don't need any special gloves or anything like that. So that that is really, in my opinion, something that doesn't have that capability. You're going to be limited when you're uh, riding a motorcycle. It is a four inch screen diagonally, so it's kind of the standard. Stuff is getting a little bit bigger but for the motorcycles. We haven't seen too much bigger yet. And I think some of it is just a weight and power consumption concern and I'm sure cost, the pressure type touch screens are more expensive than the type of stuff you see on a smartphone. But if we work our way around, upper left screen, you get the, the main screen there, the front of it, what you're going to look at. You go over to the right hand screen, you do see the back of the unit, there are some little covers covered up and the battery box is shut. And in this case, this is a 680T, so it does have the camera, I believe it's a 12 megapixel camera. Not some people use a lot, but it is on there. That's what the thing on the bottom right hand is. And if we move to the middle right hand screen or screenshot, and that is the with the battery box open. So it does come with a lithium battery that has a really great life. It's 18 to 20 hours, depending on how good the battery is and what you're doing with it. But that's the marketed battery life. You do have the ability to run double A batteries, which is something I haven't had to use personally. But it's nice to know that. The batteries in my headlamp will work, so if for some reason I'm hiking out because the bike broke or something broke and I'm not getting power, I can keep the GPS powered longer and, and get out of the woods uh, as, as it were. If we move over to the middle left-hand screen, there is the plug there, and that is going to be for an audio out. Uh, the Amps Rugged Mount also has a audio out that will keep you from having to open up a flap on the, the unit itself and risk water ingress. It's a thing that I've never used, but it's there. We go to the bottom left hand, there is a little cover that will allow you to plug in an auxiliary antenna, which would be the Garmin GA25 MCX. It's another thing that I haven't used. The current antennas, um, any of the current crop of Garmin units are very good for motorcycle use, so it's not like 10 or 15 years ago where you're having to add a remote antenna to get a good signal. They, they are really good. That's more for like a boating application if you're going to be putting it in the cabin and then you can run an external antenna that would be more accurate at that point. In the middle bottom we do have the pin connectors at the bottom so that amps rugged amount again or any of the automotive cradles. It'll use those contact points to charge the unit. Uh, there are a number of points, and some of that is for the audio out or for the serial connector if you are using it in a boating application. Again, it's a feature I've never used, but they do have it there. Uh, I use the pin connectors, just none of the serial stuff. And bottom right hand will be the mini USB plug, and that's where you're going to do... You can charge it in the house or if you're doing data transfer to the GPS unit it's or to the computer from the GPS unit itself. And I think I missed it in the battery box. You do have in the center there the little point for putting in a micro USB card. So Garmin does sell maps pre-installed on those, or you can get your own micro USB card and put maps and other data onto it. So it does have expandable memory these days on, on this unit. And one that we didn't touch on there, but I'm going to touch on now, is the power button. And the power button does turn it on and off but you do have a customizable power button menu. So if you just touch it once, briefly it'll pop up this menu. If you do have it connected to an audio out, you'll also have your volume control here. And this is a neat little shortcut menu. You can turn up and down your backlight. The little top left-hand corner, you have a lock button, and this is a feature I use a lot. So if you are on your map screen, you touch the power button, you get here and you lock the screen, 
when you press the screen, it's not going to do anything. You have to touch the power button again, but it allows you to lock it, which I find really handy, especially in dusty environments where you're going to want to be able to wipe the screen to get it more clear, but without having to mess with any of the menus. Also on like a dirt bike, if you, you know, bump it against your chest or you know, bash your helmet against the GPS, it's not going to skip you to a different menu. So something really handy. You can customize the power button both for a single touch and a double touch, and we'll get into that more in the setup as well, but kind of a neat thing where power button is not just the power button. And now onto the main menu, and this is the main menu in the motorcycle profile as it comes out of the box. So, as I mentioned, it's extremely customizable, and on my G personal GPS unit, I don't have this menu anymore because I've customized it a lot, but this is what you're going to start with. For the purpose of this class, most of the screenshots going to be off of a, a factory reset unit. So it's going to be just as it came out of the box. If you've customized, some of these tools or applications will have moved around. You can add shortcuts as well. So this is the way it comes out of the box. And then if you touch on that little arrow on the left-hand side, you do have what Garmin calls the drawer. It's a side menu, and this is just more applications and where you tuck it away. And you can rearrange these. You can pull it from here to the main screen, or you can reorganize them here. There's a lot of stuff that you can see that you probably, if you're riding a motorcycle, don't care about the hunting and fishing rules or geocaching or area calculation. There's a lot of stuff that just doesn't pertain to motorcycle use. So a lot of times I'll move those down and then move the ones I want up or all the way to the main screen. And to move them, it's just like on an Apple iPhone you press and hold on the icon it starts shaking and then you can start rearranging stuff and then you just hit the power button again and it it stops it being in that mode so it is really awesome you can have a lot of stuff customized and kind of tucked away in a few different spots and as an example of customized main menus these are three off of my personal GPS unit and you can change the background or even do custom wallpapers like I've done and where you can customize so much on these units, I do like to have kind of a visual cue. So if I haven't used a GPS in a while or I just took it out of the, my truck and I put it on the bike, I don't go, why is my map set up wrong and start changing everything. I can go, oh, it says Chevrolet on the back, not KTM, so I need to change my profile. And we'll, again, go through how to change profiles as we dive deeper into this unit. So this is just the basic... the step one, the very basic overview of the unit and what it's good for. So if you are don't have a unit yet and you're kind of thinking which way to go, hopefully you have a little more information. And then from here, we're going to dive into the setup menu and how to really dial it in. And then the third video will be on some of the different tools that are very useful when using the Garmin Montana series of GPS units on a motorcycle. So watch the rest of them. If you have questions that we don't cover, all of our contact info is up there, 1-800-491-2926 or Tortech USA. We have all the bits and pieces for this, so give us a call if you have questions. If not, click on the next video and dive further and learn more.